Good morning. We um, still have a couple of people who have said they were coming who aren't here, but um, I said I would start this at 11, and I intend to. So uh, thank you to all of you who are here. Um, we all know this is the silly season of politics, and it seems that everyone has an opinion about my career. For quite some time, I've heard, I've heard it all. I'm running. I'm not running. I assure you, I fully intended to be on the ballot this November. Sometimes the most difficult discussions we need to have are with ourselves. For the past several weeks, I've done a considerable amount of soul searching, and although I generally consider myself a very decisive person, I've been anything but quick to make a decision. I have finally listened to my inner self and to my wonderful and caring family. And this is the right time for me to end my 41-year political career. Those of you who have covered me over the years know that as public a person as I am, I have carefully and adamantly guarded my personal life as much as possible. The exception, of course, being my bragging rights about my four grandchildren. A few years ago, I was diagnosed with glaucoma. I've had surgery and have continued to be treated on a regular basis. These past few months, I've forced myself to come to grips with the fact that driving at night is becoming more difficult, particularly in snow, rain, and fog. I needed to think about whether I want to be a nighttime driver, especially in Albany traffic, two years from now. The answer became more clear to me as I forced these personal discussions, and the answer is no. Right now, the glaucoma is somewhat stabilized, making this the right time to join Elmer, who has been retired for 15 years, to spend some time traveling without an extremely demanding work schedule and constantly checking dozens of emails. I've enjoyed each of my three political careers, county legislator for 10 years, treasurer for 21, and assemblywoman for 10 when I finished this year. Perhaps totaling up 41 years in public service and in politics is reason enough to step aside. It's been an incredible opportunity to meet so many wonderful folks throughout Clinton and Franklin counties, the town of St. Armand and Essex County for six years, and four towns in St. Lawrence County for the past four years. Although there's a certain excitement and aura about Albany, my true passion for this position as the Assemblywoman is the time spent working with thousands of constituents throughout the 3,200 square mile district. The friendships I have made with colleagues on both sides of the aisle in Albany will be great memories when I carry, which I will carry with me forever. However, it's the spirit and the soul of the residents across this district, the respect and support they have given me, and yes, above all, the irreplaceable and forever friendships I have made with people of all political persuasions that have made these years incredibly special. While I've accomplished a lot and I've helped many, many people, there are still issues I'd like to see settled. The top of that list is to stand shoulder to shoulder with the correction officers to defend those officers who do a very difficult job under tough circumstances and do it well in a professional manner every single day. I hope Inspector General Leahy Scott releases her report soon so we can deal with it and continue rebuilding Clinton Strong. I'm sure many people won't understand when I say touring all five of the correctional facilities is one of the things I'll miss the most next year. Under different and fun circumstances, I will also miss touring the 19 school districts, meeting with many dedicated administrators and teachers. There is absolutely nothing more fulfilling and inspiring than walking into classrooms and seeing students of all ages engaged. 
I've also toured many of our large and small employers, and each one has provided me an insight into the economic diversity of our area that most people never have a chance to experience. I don't know where to begin to mention the honors I've received and opportunities I've had. None have been more fulfilling than presenting assembly resolutions to recognize the 21 Corrections Emergency Response Teams, CERT, from across the state, and Troop B, State Police Major Chuck Guess and Sergeant Jay Cook in the assembly chambers in March. The opportunity to introduce these heroes to my colleagues and see the respect extended to them will forever be a highlight of my career. Yesterday, for the 10th time, we passed a resolution in the Assembly requesting the Governor to declare May 12th as Asperger's Syndrome Day. Happy birthday to our grandson, Jeremy, today. I've relished the many times I've been able to recognize people of all ages for any number of reasons, accomplishments, commencements, senior citizens, veterans, students, teachers, Eagle Scouts, Girl Scouts, firefighters, EMTs, small business owners, people with disabilities, athletes of all ages and all sports, milestones, birthdays, and wedding anniversaries, significant accomplishments by individuals and businesses, and the list goes on. Each citation I've written, every certificate I've signed, every newspaper clipping I've mailed with a personally written note have a special meaning to me. The many thank you notes I've received, although much appreciated, were unnecessary, given the pleasure I've had in presenting them all. I'm sure there would never be a time when I could walk away and feel I've accomplished all I wanted. And I certainly don't feel that way today. There's much left to do. Dealing with the heroin opiate addiction crisis, assuring proper services and funding for our population with developmental disabilities and those with mental illness, continuing efforts to provide an adequately funded public education for pre-K through college, establishing stronger ethics regulations, and the list goes on. Each year, as one issue gets settled, two more get added. In order to assure the selection of a candidate to run, I had to make the decision now. Waiting, in, waiting any longer is simply not an option. I will not allow my name to be placed on a petition without 100% commitment that I can serve for two more years. The process of selecting a qualified, dedicated candidate with high ethical standards who will represent us well can now take place, and I expect to be an integral part of the campaign. I believe I set the bar high, and I will work to elect the next Assembly member who has the same passion and work ethic as I do to represent the 115th district. I feel I'm leaving at the top of my game, and I'm incredibly proud of the number of my colleagues on both sides of the aisle who have asked me to run for re-election. To experience the sincerity of their comments, whether Democrat or Republicans, is humbling and gratifying. And I know I've surely done some things right to have so many great friends in the Assembly Chambers. I'm equally proud of the multi-party support that continues to be extended to me throughout this district at every event I attend. I'm joined today by my family. My husband, Elmer, is the one who convinced me to run for county legislator in 1975. Maybe he's had some misgivings since then. <laughs> He has certainly never wavered in his strength and support. I've been in political office for 41 of the 48 years of our marriage. My son, John, was seven years old when I was first elected. He and his wife of 27 years, Michelle, have two adult children. Alyssa is a student at Clinton Community College and a full-time employee at Meadowbrook Nursing Home. She and Brandon will be married in September. Jeremy, our birthday guy, is a really, really special young man. My daughter, Michelle, was less than a year old when I was first elected to the legislature. 
This past January, as I watched her hold the Bible for her husband, Robbie, as he took the oath of office for the county legislature, I had a flashback of taking that same oath for that same position 41 years ago. Robbie and Michelle will be married 21 years in a couple of weeks, and they have two beautiful teenage daughters. Lacey will be an honors graduate from Peru Central School next month and will be attending Plattsburgh State in the fall. Allie is our gymnast, finishing her freshman year at Peru Central. The entire extended Dupree family has been incredibly supportive all these years, as have my Lacey and Calkins families. My A-team, my consultants, they're the very few people I could count on to be brutally honest when I came up with a really dumb idea and always supportive when I needed them, which was often. Andy and Jill Abdella, Gary and Kathy DeSell, Kathy and Brian Karofsky, Tom and Mary Sears, Dr. Merritt Spear, a supporter for all 41 years and the person who was most directly responsible for encouraging me to run for the assembly in 2006 convincing me I could end my predecessor's career and also agreeing to be my campaign manager. Greg Bell has been my campaign treasurer for the past 10 years. He and his wife Janine are great friends. Of all the things I've learned, particularly these past 10 years in the assembly, is how fortunate I am to have the absolute unconditional love and support of my family and friends. I will be eternally grateful for this experience and the opportunity to represent the best region in the entire state of New York, our North Country. I don't know what the future holds, but I hope I'll be able to continue with some of the unfinished projects that are so critical to all of us as friends and neighbors. One thing I can say with certainty, I will be here in the North Country. There is absolutely nowhere else I want to be. I'm going to finish where I started. Today is the most difficult day I faced in my 41 year political career. This decision has been a struggle for me, but I am at peace with it. I guarantee I will continue to work as hard as ever to meet the needs of the 115th Assembly District from now through December 31st. I want to thank the members of the media for being here today and for all of your support over these many years. I extend my heartfelt thanks to my family and friends and to all the people who live in the 115th District and throughout the North Country who have shared this experience with me. I'm happy to take any questions. Um, a little bit hard to, to name just one. I, I could probably narrow it down to three. One is certainly, as I said, the introductions of our hometown heroes um, just a couple months ago. Um, the other is having been a co-sponsor of the Autism Insurance Bill, which provided coverage for thousands and thousands of children and adults who never had it before. And I guess the bill that affected the most lives and which I feel I was on the right side of history is the marriage equality bill. How do you think the district has changed in your 10 years in the assembly? Other than becoming more Democrat? <laughs> 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 which again, I, I will say I'm so, so, I've been so blessed and so pleased to have the bipartisan support I have and, and feel I continue to have. I know I continue to have. Um, I think we've grown in certain areas, and in other areas we, we have, you know, we continue to lose population in the Adirondack Park. Um, the environmentalists continue to stymie us at every corner. Uh, they've made it, they continue to make it more difficult for us to develop um, businesses and, and, and to grow uh, throughout many, too many of our regions in, in my district. Um, we certainly have watched our education system struggle. 
um, in, mar in large part because of the standardized testing and, and some of the regulations that have gone with that. And I think we're beginning to see our way out of that. Um, and that's one of the things I wish I could see to the end, and, and that's not going to happen. Uh, sorry, I, that, that's, those are the things off the top of my head. But, you know, I, I think we, I look at a bright future. I think that we, um, you know, we're, we're well based to, to have further economic development and growth and, and encourage tourism. And, um, you know, all people have to figure out is what a great part of the country are, we are. They're going to come. Janet, uh, you talk about, you know, the glaucoma and yep. everything being the primary reason for you to retire. When you went through your decision making, was the, the culture in Albany and all of these, um, you know, the culture of corruption and the investigations, did that come as any sort of factor in your decision? Not really. Um, you know, when I had, and, and I told a very few of my Democrat colleagues yesterday that I was making this announcement today, and when I had their arms around me and saying, are you sure this is what you really want to do? Um, there are a lot of good people in Albany, and those are the people that I'm friends with. I think that we'll overcome this dark time, and, and it certainly is. My biggest concern is that there won't be enough ethics reform quickly enough. Uh, and I know that, you know, there's certainly the theory that you can't legislate people to be good. If they're going to be crooks, they're going to be crooks. And I don't care what you put on, on the law books, but we need to do more for ethics reform. Certainly the Assembly has passed some initial reform. We need to do more. Um, but uh, no, it, it, that, that's not one of the reasons I'm leaving. I, I think that, in fact, as I said in, in my remarks, I, I think it's critically, critically important that whoever gets elected to this position, the number one qualification should be a high ethical standard. And eventually, will you have to have surgery for the glaucoma? I've had surgery. Um, I had a discussion, and, and, and I, I had a follow-up just last week, which kind of escalated some of this, but... Um, the follow-up surgery is is iffy, and so um, you know I'm, it's nothing I'm looking looking to do in the immediate future. And, and you know I can I can see from here to, to forever. Um, it's it's just the nighttime thing that that's really gotten difficult, and some of the the peripheral vision and, and the depth perception. And I I just don't want to wake up someday and say woulda coulda shoulda. And you know I'm 70, so you know it all uh, all kind of there, there's a lot of those pieces that figured in. We want to enjoy our 50th wedding anniversary. Janet, yes, Zach. At a time when uh, Donald Trump is the likely you know, Republican nominee for president, do you worry that in your absence, someone like Karen Bisco could jump in and pick up some momentum? <laughs> I will tell you one of the reasons I was looking forward to a campaign this year is because I didn't have any right-wing radicals out there talking about a primary. Um, I would have enjoyed a one-on-one, -on -one and, and, I, and I just, I mean, you know, I don't, I don't mind campaigning. I don't mind the, uh, all that goes with a campaign as long as it's, it's respectful. And, and I was looking forward to that being the case, um, hopefully, going forward. So um, I would certainly hope that the committees that will have to make the decision do so wisely. And can I repeat, I think we need people who have high ethical standards. Are you looking at anybody in particular that you hope will run as a Republican to replace you? I think that once this hits, we'll have some people coming forward. Um, I have spoken with some people in the past. Um, I think there's at least one or two still interested, some who aren't, and I, I just, I don't want to put out any names. I think that over the next few days that that will become clear. I mean, we're, we're in a time frame now, and, and I understand that. I do thank everybody for coming. We do have written um, copies of my remarks for everybody, so please make sure you take one when you leave. And um, thank you again, all of you, for your support, um, for being here today. Um, I know some of you traveled a ways to get here.
and um, special thanks and love to my family and my friends. Thank <laughs> you.